extension of that learned being of a former period reached the learned beings of the Babylonian epoch by means of what is called a Kashiritelir, inscribed by Lentrohansanin with his own hand. I find it necessary to give you a few details about the arising of this Lentrohansanin and how, thanks to the accidental circumstances of his environment, he later became a great worm being, and an authority for his contemporaries almost everywhere on the surface of your planet. Very characteristic story can serve as an excellent example of a practice, long ago firmly established in the process of existence of these three brain beings who have taken your fancy, by which some of them become so to say, authorities, at first for other, learned beings of new formation, and then for all the unfortunate ordinary beings there. By chance that I came upon the details concerning the conditions of Lentrohamsanin's arising and subsequent formation into a responsible being, while I was trying to find out which aspects of the strange psyche of your favorites had led to the gradual change, and finally to the total destruction, of all those beneficent forms introduced and fixed in the process of their being existence by the ideally foreseeing reason of our now omnicosmic, very saintly Ashiata Shemash, during the period of his self-preparation to be what he now is for the whole of the universe. It was then that I learned that this Lentrohamsanin arose or, as is said there, was, born, on the continent of Asia in the city of Kanbakan, the capital of Nevia. His conception resulted from the blending of two heterogeneous, Exioiharis formed in two already elderly free-brained, Keshapmarnian, beings. His, producers, or, as they say, his, parents, having chosen the capital of Nubia as their place of permanent existence, had moved their three terrestrial years before the rising of that future universal Hasnamas. He was the firstborn of his elderly and very rich parents. For although the blending of their exioiharis had been actualized many times before, yet, as I found out, they were so absorbed in acquiring riches that they did not wish to be hindered in this pursuit, and always had recourse, at each actualization of this sacred blending, to what is called, to see, or, as your contemporary favorites express it, abortion. Single quote. By the time the source of the active principle of his origin, in other words his father, had built up his fortune, he had several caravans of his own as well as caravanserais for bartering goods in various cities of Nevia. As for the source of the passive principle of his origin, that is, his mother, she at first followed the profession of what is called TCG, but later she organized a holy faith on a small mountain and spread propaganda about its supposed significance, which was that childless beings of the female sex, on visiting this place, would become able to conceive. When this couple, in what is called their declining years, had become very rich, they moved to the city of Kronbokan to exist there solely for their own pleasure. But soon they felt that without a real result, that is, without a child, pleasure could never be complete, and from that time on, without sparing any money, they took every possible measure to obtain such a result. With this in view, they visited all sorts of holy places maintained for that purpose, with the exception, of course, of their own, 
holy mountain, and tried every kind of medical means that purported to aid the blending of heterogeneous exioiharis and when by chance this blending actually took place, there finally arose that long-awaited result of theirs, later called Lentrohamsanin. From the very first, his parents were completely wrapped up in what they described as their God-sent result, or son, and spent vast sums on his pleasures and on what is called his education. Their ideal was to give him the very best upbringing and education the earth could provide. For this purpose they engaged what are called tutors and teachers, both from their own country of media and from various distant lands. The foreign tutors and teachers were brought there chiefly from the country today called Egypt. Single quote. By the time this Papa's and Mama's darling was nearing the age of responsible being he was already, as they say there, very well brought up and educated, that is, he had in his presence a great many data for all kinds of egoplasticory, consisting, as usual, of fantastic and dubious information, and later, when he reached responsible age in the abnormally established conditions of existence there, he responded automatically to all kinds of corresponding accidental shocks. When this future great learned being reached responsible age he had indeed a great deal of information or, as it is, called there, knowledge, nevertheless in relation to this information or, knowledge, he had acquired no being whatever. Well, on the one hand because of the total lack of being in his presence and on the other hand because there were already thoroughly crystallized in him those consequences of the properties of the organ Kundabupper called vanity, self-love, swaggering, and so forth. This, Mama's and Papa's darling, having become a learned being of new formation, had the ambition to be considered a famous scientist, not only among the beings of media but also over the whole of the surface of their planet. So, with all his presence he dreamed and ruminated about how he could attain this. He spent many days in serious thought, and finally he decided first of all to invent a theory about some question nobody before him had ever touched upon and then to inscribe this invention of his upon a Kashiridalir, the likes of which had never been inscribed upon before, nor ever could be in the future. And from that day on he set to work to carry out that decision of his. With the help of his many slaves he first prepared such a Kashiridalir, as had never existed before. In those days on the planet Earth, Kashirite ears were usually made from one or another part of the hide of a quadruped being called Buffalo. The Lentrohamsanin made his Kashirite ear from a hundred buffalo hides joined together. By the way, Kashirite ears were later replaced by what is called parchment. Well, when this unprecedented Kashirite ear was ready, the future great Lentrohamsanin inscribed upon it his invention concerning a question that indeed had never entered anybody's head before, nor was there any reason why it should have. That is to say, in these wise acrings of his he criticized in every way the prevailing order of collective existence. This Kashirite ear began thus. Man's greatest happiness consists in not being dependent on any other person, whoever it may be, and in being free from the influence of anyone whatsoever. 
Some other time, my boy, I will explain to you how your favorites on the planet Earth generally understand freedom. The inscription of this future universal Hasnamus went on as follows. Undeniably, life under the present state organization is far better for us than it used to be, but where then is that real freedom which we need to bring us happiness? Don't we work and toil as much now as we did under any former state organization? Do we not have to labor and sweat to get enough barley to keep us alive and not starve to death like chained dogs? Our lords and masters and pastors are always harping upon some other world, supposedly so much better than this one, where life is wholly blissful for the souls of those men who have lived worthily here on earth. Don't we live here worthily now? Don't we constantly labor and sweat for our daily bread? If all that our masters and pastors tell us is true and if their own way of living here on earth really corresponds to what is required of their souls for the other world, surely God ought to, and even must, give them more possibilities in this world than to us ordinary mortals. If everything that our leaders and counselors tell us and try to make us believe is really true, let them prove it to us ordinary mortals by facts. Let them prove it to us, for instance, by changing a pinch of common sand into bread, the very sand in which, thanks to the sweat of our brow, the barley grows for our daily bread. Let our present leaders and counselors do this, and I will be the first to fall on my knees and kiss their feet. But meanwhile, things being as they are, we ourselves must struggle and we ourselves must strive for our real happiness and real freedom, and liberate ourselves from the need to toil and sweat. months of the year we have no trouble obtaining our daily bread, but how we must work ourselves to the bone during those four summer months getting the barley we need. Only he who sows and reaps the barley knows what hard labor it takes. True, for eight months we are free, but only from physical labors, while our consciousness, namely, our nearest and highest part, is the slave, day and night, of these illusory ideas always being dinned into us by our masters and pastors. No, enough. We ourselves, without our present leaders and counselors, who have become such without our consent, must strive for our real freedom and our real happiness. And we can obtain real freedom and happiness only if we all act as one, that is, all for one and one for all, but first we must destroy everything that is old. And we must do this to make room for the new life we ourselves shall create, which will give us real freedom and real happiness. Down with dependence on others. We ourselves will be the masters of our own destiny and no longer those who rule our lives without our knowledge and without our consent. Our lives must be governed and guided by those whom we ourselves shall elect from our midst, that is, only from those who themselves toil for their daily bread. And we must elect these governors and leaders on the basis of equal rights without distinction of sex or age, by universal, direct, equal, and open ballot. Thus ended that famous Kashiritalir. When this future universal Hasnamas, Lentrohamsanan, had finished inscribing his wise actings on this unprecedented Kashiritalir, he arranged an enormous and costly banquet to which he invited the learned beings 
from all over Nubia, taking upon himself all their traveling expenses, and at the end of the feast he showed them his cashierite ear. Well, learned beings. Gathered at that free banquet from almost the whole of Nevia were at first so flabbergasted at the sight of that unique cashierite here that they were, as is said there, struck dumb, and it was only after some time that they began to look at each other with amazement and to exchange opinions in whispers. Above all they asked one another how it was possible that not a single being, ordinary or learned, had known or guessed that in their own country there existed a learned being with such knowledge. Suddenly the oldest one of them, and the most renowned, jumped up on the table like a boy, and with the information long since proper to the learned beings of new formation, which has also reached contemporary learned beings, proclaimed the following. Listen, all of you, and try to realize that we, assembled here as representatives of the beings of the earth, we do have already, thanks to our great knowledge, attained independent individuality, now have the privilege of being the first to behold with our own eyes the coming of a messiah of divine consciousness, sent from above to reveal world truths to us. Thereupon began that pernicious reciprocal, praising to the skies which has always been practiced among the learned beings of new formation, and which prevents any true knowledge that happens to reach them from evolving there as it does everywhere else in the universe, if only through the passage of time, on the contrary, owing to this maleficent practice, even the knowledge already attained is destroyed, and its possessors become shallower and shallower. Well then, all the learned beings began shouting and pushing each other in order to get near Lentroham Fanon, and hailing him as their long-awaited messiah, they expressed to him by their admiring glances the extent of what is called their high titillation. Single quote. The most interesting thing about all this is the reason why these learned beings were so worked up and gave vent so freely to their learned, sniveling, which was that there had been formed in the psyche of your favorites, thanks as always to the same abnormally established conditions of ordinary existence, a certain extremely strange conviction that anyone who becomes a follower of a well-known and important being will appear to others to be almost as well-known and important himself. So, on the strength of his being very rich, and what is more now very famous, all the other learned beings of the country of Nevia immediately express their approval of this Lentroham Sanon. Well, my dear boy, no sooner had the learned scientists of Nevia returned home after this banquet than they began talking, at first to their neighbors and later here, there, and everywhere, about that extraordinary cashierite here, and, foaming at the mouth, they asserted and proved to everybody the truth of those, revelations, which the great Lentro Hansanen had inscribed upon this cashierite here. The result of it all was that the ordinary beings of the city of Kronbukhan, as well as of other cities of Nevia, talked among themselves of nothing but these revelations. And gradually, as usually happens there almost everywhere, beings became divided into two opposing parties, one of which favored the invention of the future universal Hasnamas, and the other the already well-established forms of being existence. Thus it continued for almost a whole terrestrial year, during which the ranks of the contending parties increased everywhere while toward each other one of their specific properties called 
case, also increased the result was that one sorrowful day in the city of Kongokan there suddenly broke out between the followers of these two opposing currents the process of what is called, Civil War. Civil War, is the same as, War, the only difference is that in ordinary war beings of one community destroy the beings of another community, whereas in civil war the process of reciprocal destruction goes on among beings of one and the same community, for example, brother annihilates brother, father, son, uncle, nephew, and so on. horrible process was at its height in Kronbokan, and the attention of the other beings of the whole country of Nibia was concentrated on it, everything was still relatively quiet in the other cities, except for occasional skirmishes here and there but at the end of the fourth day, those who were for the invention of Lentroham Sanin, that is, for the learned beings, were victorious in Kronbokan, and from then on the same process began in all the large and small cities of Nibia. This widespread and horrible process continued until a source of learned beings appeared who, feeling firm ground beneath their feet, compelled all the surviving beings to accept Lentrohamsanan's ideas, and immediately destroyed everything from then on, all the three brain beings of Nibia became followers of the invention of Lentrohamsanan, and soon afterward there was established in that community a special form of government called a republic. Still later, the community of Nibia, having by then become great and powerful, began, as usually happens there, making war on neighboring communities for the purpose of imposing upon them its new form of state organization. Single quote. And so, my boy, on the largest continent of your planet, the processes of reciprocal destruction again began to take place among these strange free brain beings, and at the same time there were gradually changed and finally destroyed those various beneficent forms of ordinary existence which had been established thanks to the ideally foreseeing reason of our now most saintly Ashiata Shemash. Thereupon there again arose on the surface of your planet, only to be destroyed anew and to give place to others, numerous separate communities with every kind of interstate organization. Although the direct effect of that maleficent invention of the now universal Hasnamus Lentrohamsanan was that the practice of existing in separate communities was revived among your favorites, and although they again resumed their periodic reciprocal destruction, yet in some of these newly arisen, independent communities on the continent of Asia being still continued to conform in their ordinary existence to many of the wisely foreseen usages of the very saintly Ashiata Shemash, which had been inseparably fused with the automatic process of their daily life. And so those who were to blame for the final destruction of the usages and customs that still remained in certain communities were the aforementioned, learned beings, who had been assembled in the city of Babylon. And they were to blame owing to the following circumstances. At the General Planetary Conference, of all the learned beings on the famous, question of the beyond, which was organized in Babylon, it happened that among those who went there of their own accord was the great-grandson of Lentrohamsanan, who had himself become a learned being. Single quote. He 
brought with him an exact copy on papyrus of his great-grandfather's famous cashier earlier, the original of which he had received by inheritance and at the very height of the frenzy, unleashed by the question of the soul, during one of the last big general meetings of the learned beings, he read aloud the text of that maleficent invention of his great-grandfather, whereupon it occurred, as had become proper to the strange reason of these sorry scientists, that from one question that interested them they at once passed to quite another, namely, from the question of the soul, to the question of what is called politics. Then, all over the city of Babylon meetings and discussions again began on the subject of various kinds of state organizations, those already existing and those which in their opinion ought to be formed. Of course, all their discussions were based on the truths expounded in the invention of Lentrohamsanan, as reproduced on the papyrus brought by his great-grandson, a copy of which almost every learned being then in Babylon carried in his pocket. For several months they discussed and argued, and they ended up by splitting into parties, that is to say, all the learned beings then in the city of Babylon split into three independent sections, under the following names, the first the section of the Legomonists, the second the section of the Neomathists, the third the section of the Paleomathists. Each of these sections soon had its adherence among the ordinary beings of Babylon, and once again things would certainly have ended in civil war if the Persian king, getting wind of all this, had not immediately cracked them on their learned noddles. On his order some of these learned scientists were executed, others were imprisoned with lice, and still others were banished to places where even now, as Mullah Nasser Eddin would say, French champagne cannot be found. The few who were shown to have been mixed up in all this only because they were obviously mad were permitted to return to their own countries, while those who had taken no part whatever in political questions were not only given full liberty to return to their native lands, but by order of the Persian king, their departure was even conducted with full honors. And so, my boy, those Babylonian learned beings who for various reasons survived and were scattered over almost the whole surface of the planet continued by momentum to Wiseacre, taking as their basis, not consciously, of course, but simply mechanically, the two leading questions that had arisen during those Babylonian events and had become the theme of the day, namely, the famous questions concerning the soul of man, and internal state organization. The result of these wise offerings of theirs was that throughout the continent of Asia civil wars broke out in various communities and the process of mass reciprocal destruction between different communities started up once more. The destruction of the last remnants of the conscious labors of the very saintly Ashiata Shemash thus continued on the continent of Asia for about a century and a half, yet in spite of this, certain customs created by Ashiata Shemash for the good of their being existence were still preserved in some places and continued by momentum. When the three brain beings of the neighboring continent, now called Europe, began taking part in these Asiatic wars and when, courts, led by the archvain glorious Greek called Alexander of Macedonia, overran almost the whole continent of Asia, they made, as is said, a clean sweep from the surface of that ill-fated planet of everything that had been established and preserved, 
so clear as sweet that not a trace was left even of the memory that there once existed on their planet such bliss, intentionally created for their existence by that reason whose possessor is now one of our seven most saintly omnicosmic individuals.